i hope you have all seen it in your classroom okay so in the uh, present part of it what we will be discussing is the phylum mollusca okay so i'll display the presentation slide So what you can uh, remember in this particular phylum is phylum mollusca, soft-bodied animals they are, okay? The second largest phylum, you can uh, notice in Canada, you might be calling this as kaude, which you use as a dice, isn't it? Or chaukabara, you use this kaude, then shanka, the conch shells, kapechipu, that is the uh, oysters, the mussels, we call them as freshwater mussels. Uh, the oysters, they have this cape chip, okay? So these are the different types of structures that you notice in case of this phylum mollusca. They are soft-bodied animals, but they have a, a secretion outside them. So it is almost like they carry their home on them, okay? Snails are example of this phylum mollusca. Octopus or devil fish is an example of this phylum mollusca. Sepia, then uh, you also have loligo, so sepia is the cuttlefish, loligo is the squid, okay? So these are all the different types of mollusca that you can notice in this phylum mollusca. So they are the second largest phylum in animal kingdom. The first largest phylum is the arthropoda. The second largest phylum is phylum mollusca. So they are the soft bodied animals that you have to remember about. So the characters at a glance or salient features of this phylum mollusca. So they have organ system of organization. So bilateral symmetry, they have triploblastic germ layers. They have three germ layers, outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm and inner endoderm. They have true coelom. That is coelom or cavity is lined by this mesoderm. So they have a true coelom. Habit and habitat, they are aquatic. Few of these organisms are terrestrials. So they are aquatic organisms. Majority of them are aquatic, few of them are terrestrial. So you might have noticed the snail. Snail belongs to the common uh, pond snail, the garden snails. They are all belonging to this phylum mollusca. So digestive system is complete because they have uh, mouth and anus separate opening is there. Respiratory system, gills are found in aquatic forms and you notice pulmonary sac in terrestrial forms like garden snails you can notice them having pulmonary sac so gills are found in the aquatic forms the circulatory system is open type that is the heart pumps the blood into the body spaces reproduction you can notice these organism are dioecious you can differentiate between male and female uh, uh, you can notice that they are males and female individuals are separate that is they are unisexuals oviparous they lay eggs Development is direct. If it is, uh, they don't have larval stages, it is direct. Some of them have larval stages, so they are indirect. So development is direct or indirect. So they are dioecious, male and female uh, individuals are separate. They are egg laying, so we call them as oviparous. Development is direct or indirect. So the unique features of this phylum mollusca, their body has head, you can notice in snail, very well head and this is the foot ventral foot they have so they have body has head visceral mass and muscular foot this foot is very much muscular head has sensory tentacles you can notice this sensory tentacles even in octopus they have so eight tentacles they have so or eight arms that is the reason we call it as octopus so in case of this uh, squid you can notice this uh, arms the tentacles you can notice them okay feather like gills for respiration and excretion you can also notice that they have feather like gills for respiration as well as excretion removal of nitrogenous waste so they secrete calcareous shell so within the shell you can find the mantle and radula so they secrete this calcareous shell they carry their homes on them whenever they are disturbed by the predator they get they go inside into their shells 
okay they have a hard calcareous shell you know, and you also notice the mantle and radula so these are the unique features of it body is divided into head visceral mass and muscular foot head has sensory tentacles this is unique feature they have feather like gills which is utilized for respiration as well as excretion they have calcareous shell uh, secreted and they have the uh, mantle and radula so that is also the other thing that you have to remember regarding them they also have this mantle and radula okay so the examples for them pila the apple snail this is apple snail pink teda oyster pearl oyster from which we extract the pearls sepia okay sepia is the uh, cuttlefish loligo is the squid okay octopus or devil fish aplysia sea mouse dentalium so tusk shells okay they look like the tusks of elephants so dentalium they call it as ketopleura so these are all the different examples that you have to remember under mollusca so the, these are the salient features of the phylum mollusca okay so the unique feature that you can notice in phylum mollusca is so the body has head head region is there so they retract their head whenever they are in danger and only the foot is visible so this is the muscular foot they have head with sensory tentacles so this part of it is the entire part the body part is the visceral mass so visceral hump they have this hump like structure so the visceral mass or it is also called as visceral hump and muscular foot so the body has head visceral mass and muscular foot so they say they have their uh, calcareous shell secreted so head has sensory tentacles okay so the calcareous shell is also a unique feature of this particular mollusca see univalve shell shanka is only one shell they have we call it as univalve shell bivalve shell this cape chip what we call it as the pearl oysters the freshwater mussel you can notice this bivalve shell so you can open them the bivalve shell is there so they have their own unique ornamentation of secreting this shell okay different species have different types of ornamentation of this shell so such such wonderful things you observe in nature isn't it it's art in nature that you can look in this calcareous shell okay many of you have the hobby of collecting shells so you might have even used uh, in your puja rooms the conch shell so they are all uh, obtained from the phylum mollusca so notice the type of uh, calcareous secretions that they have and it is unique to every uh, species of it okay so the unique features other unique features are feather like gills that you can notice can you notice here the feather like gills it is used for both respiration and excretion for removal of nitrogenous waste also they use this feather like gills okay the mantle and radula are also seen so you can notice the mantle and radula so radula are small teeth like structures within their mouth okay so the mantle and radula are also seen what is mantle mantle is also called as pallium so the membrane which covers see the membrane which covers the visceral mass we call it as mantle the space between the hump okay the space between the hump and the mantle is called as mantle cavity so the space between the hump and the mantle we call it as mantle cavity okay remember about this part of it so the space between hump and mantle is also called as mantle cavity so this is about the mantle mantle is also called as pallium it is a membrane which covers the visceral mass the space between the hump and the mantle is called the mantle cavity so radula they are file like filing structures which they use in work workshops okay if they are file like rasping organ present in the mouth of mollusks so what are radula they are file like rasping organs present in the mouth of 
mollusk which is used for feeding so they are not teeth we instead we call them as radula they are file like uh, rasping organs in the mouth of mollusk we call which is used for feeding so mantle and radula are seen when you uh, are going to write this you should understand what is mantle mantle is a membrane which covers the visceral mass the space between the hump the visceral hump and the mantle is called as mantle cavity okay radula is file like rasping organs found in the uh, mouth of mollusk it is used for feeding okay so these are the unique features of phylum mollusca now the examples of phylum mollusca you can notice this pila or apple snail pink tad or pearl oyster okay how is the pearl formed students how is the pearl formed anyone would like to say the process of pearl formation okay one of your friend is saying after dust enters the organism how else is the pearl formed secretion of certain substances over an irritant good or is it like as they show it in the movies that the oyster would be open and the rain droplet it gets into the shell and they are going to close that and that rain droplet develops into the pearl is it the same as most of the poets say yes very good so see the pearl is formed out of irritation so whenever the dust particle or uh, sand particle enters in, into the shell so it causes irritation to them in order to overcome the irritation they secrete substances the more the irritation the larger the size of the pearl okay so uh, the in order to overcome the irritation they secrete secretions on them so that is going to lead to the formation of pearl so it is not that the rain droplet falls into the open oyster see first of all oysters are found in the oceans and they are, they would be in the bottom of the oceans so the rain droplet is not a ballistic missile that it can penetrate through this uh, nearly 1 or 2 kilometers of uh, the depth of oceans okay so that is not going to happen so you should understand that the rain droplet even if it falls it spreads on the surface of the water itself it cannot penetrate into the seas or oceans and if they are kept there shell open the water enters inside immediately so you should understand that those are all myth the reality is the pearl is formed whenever the sand particles or dust particles they enter it causes irritations so the more they get irritated the larger the size of the pearl the more the number of years they have got irritated larger the diameter of the pearl so the pink tad or pearl oyster commonly called as pearl oyster so there is pearl industry also artificial pearls they are formed by they break a small part of the shell and insert it into the organism in, into the shell so that part of the shell itself uh, will be uh, ending up later as the pearl so there would be secretions on it this is how the artificial pearls are made okay using this a small part of the shell itself is inserted okay then sepia or cuttlefish you can notice that loligo or squid loligo is the scientific name of squid then you can notice this devil fish or we also call it as octopus aplysia or sea hare dentalia see they have the uh, secretions on their the outer secretions of their shell it looks like the tusk of an elephant so we call it as tusk shell keto pleura or chiton this is how the keto pleura, pleura or chiton looks okay so these are all the examples of mollusca phylum mollusca then echinodermata the next phylum that we will discuss about is phylum echinodermata they are also called as spiny skinned animals so phylum echinodermata are also called as dermata skin echino spiny skin so spines spiny skinned animals phylum echinodermata is they are spiny skinned animals already you know about a few points about phylum echinodermata the examples are starfish 
okay so starfish even if they are made into small fragments each one of them develop into a new starfish starfish they have high power of total regeneration you might have even watched in the initial clippings of that hulk movie they show the uh, regeneration process in uh, the starfish where he utilizes those for us uh, formation of hulk is sun okay so anyway those genes he utilizes so in it, here it is phylum echinodermata or spiny skinned animals starfish you can remember about and uh, sea cucumber there are a lot of examples that we'll be discussing in the phylum echinodermata okay so sea urchin would be there sea cucumber uh, so all those we will be discussing about in the phylum echinodermata the salient features of this phylum so they have organ system of organization so symmetry the adults exhibit radial symmetry but the larvae exhibits bilateral symmetry that is unique in case of this uh, phylum echinodermata so the germ layers are triploblastic they have three layers that is outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm they are true type of coelom they have line by mesoderm so they are coelomate animals so exclusively marine habit and habitat so these echinodermata they are aquatic and exclusively marine only sea forms you can notice so digestive system is complete because they have uh, both mouth and anus are separate so they have ventral mouth and dorsal anus so respiratory system is dermal branchiae on the skins they have this branchiae skin gills or papillae or tube feet they also call it as so the respiratory system is unique in case of this uh, echinodermata they are dermal branchiae or skin gills or we also call it as papillae and tube feet so these are the respiratory system circulatory system is reduced and open type of circulatory system the heart pumps the blood directly into the body spaces so the circulatory system is reduced and open type of circulatory system the reproduction is a uh, dioecious organism that is male and female are separate external fertilization it is not internal so they liberate the gametes in water the male and female gamete fuses in the water so the fertilization is external development is indirect because they have larval stages the larvae are free swimming larvae ciliated free swimming larvae they have cilia in the larvae so these are uh, characters of it unique features body is covered with spines head is absent calcareous endoskeleton ossicles you can notice the calcareous endoskeleton within them they have this calcareous endoskeleton that is ossicles so it is not water canal system we you find here water vascular system in case of these uh, echinodermata you notice water vascular system canals you find only in uh, the seal and trata uh, sorry the porifera but vascular system you find in case of uh, the echinodermata excretory system is absent so examples for this uh, phylum echinodermata asteriaes that is starfish echinus echinocardium antidon cucumeria is sea cucumber ophiura okay so they are all the examples of i'll show you the slides for the examples of them asteriaes starfish echinus or sea urchin echinocardium then sea lily is antidon ophira is brittle star then cucumeria sea cucumber so these are all the uh, members of the phylum echinodermata so what they have listed even in your textbook asteriaes is starfish echinus is sea urchin echinocardium antidon is sea lily they look like this lily flower so we call it as sea lily that is nothing but antidon okay then ophira is nothing but the brittle star and you look like this uh, they look like the five uh, arms of the star isn't it brittle star then cucumeria is sea cucumber so these are all the examples of this phylum echinodermata so unique characters you can notice they have an endoskeleton uh, which is nothing but calcareous ossicles we call it as so they'll be having this endoskeleton on them so within them which we 
call it as the calcareous ossicles or spiny body head is absent in case of these organisms echinodermata head is absent water vascular system is present so you can notice this water vascular system the water enters through this tube feet so they enter into the uh, body spaces okay so the water vascular system is present excretory system is absent so water vascular system will understand it better here or it is also called as ambulacral system water vascular system another name is ambulacral system which you notice in case of this echinodermata in this system the sea water enters through a porous plate called as madreporite and it reaches see the sea water enters through a porous plate see you can notice here this is the diagram for this water vascular system water enters through a porous plate called as madreporite and it reaches the radiating canals and tube feet podia it reaches the radiating canal and tube feet or podia so the uh, sea water that is how it is going to enter through the madreporite it enters into the radiating canals and tube feet or podia its function of this water vascular system is it is locomotor in function respiration capture and transport of food and excretion also is through this water vascular system that is the reason they don't require a separate excretory organs because the water vascular system or the ambulacral system itself also does the job of removing the nitrogenous waste or excretion takes place through this water vascular system so the function of this ambulacral system or water vascular system is locomotion respiration capture and transport of food and excretion so all this takes place by the water vascular system so these are the examples of the phylum echinodermata so in the next class we'll be discussing about phylum hemichordata and phylum chordata so that is in the upcoming classes we'll be discussing so this is what you have to remember for today's class okay so have you understood about it any doubts or clarification students